G'day Gear Junkies, Jason here. In recent months, I've been doing a few videos on some famous series of boss pedals. And you guys must be liking these videos because they're getting a fair few views. So I'm gonna continue on this. Today, I'm gonna to look at one of the smaller series, which is the OC Octave series. But before I get too far into this video, if you enjoy this kind of content, please subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. So the first octave pedal of sorts was something called the Octavia, which was a pedal that was made by a guy called Roger Mayer for Jimi Hendrix in the late 60s. He made something that we know now as an octave fuzz. Some brands started to make their own version of this. MXR had the blue box and so on. But it wasn't until about the late 70s when we started to see people calling stuff clean octave. My only example of this is the Gaia Tone dual octave box. This is supposed to be the circuit out of a blue box uh, without the fuzz. And I can tell you as an octave effect, it's terrible. <laughs> While this pedal is super cool and super unique, as an octave pedal, it sucks. So it's not something you could use uh, unless you're getting that sort of bit crush sort of sound. I did make a video about a year ago with this, getting sort of video game sounds out of it, which was super fun. But other than that, it's pretty much useless. In 1982, Boss was able to improve upon these earlier unusable designs, and they released this, the Boss OC2 Octava. The earliest versions of this pedal, like this one here, are actually called the Octave Ur. Now, they made it like this from 1982 till 1984. Then later that year, they changed it to the Octave. They also changed the shade of paint, made it a darker brown. The OC2 here was one of the last boss pedals to use the classic three knob layout. The controls are direct level, then you have a sub octave level, and then a second sub octave level. <laughs> Now this is an analog pedal and it doesn't track particularly well. Really on the lower notes, it really picks and chooses whether it can or it can't, particularly that second sub octave, which is not very usable. What I've noticed with this pedal is that it tends to track a lot better when you play up high. Now, this has gone down as an absolute cult classic for guitar players and bass players because the sub octave is a different sort of waveform. It's, it's got a sort of synth sound to it, which makes it really cool for synth bass type tones. The OC2 came out in a transitional year for Boss. So up until 1982, all Boss pedals that came out, if it had the number two, that's because there was a number one that came out before it. This is the CE1, this is the CE2. But the OC2 does not have a one version that came before it. So starting in 1982, everything that was to come out now would start on the number two. So the OC2, the VB2, and so on. I call this period in Boss's history, the Japanese era, part two. Such was the popularity of this pedal. It survived into the Taiwan era, so there are Japanese versions like this, and then there are Taiwanese versions, which are a little bit cheaper on the second-hand market. But given its popularity, the OC2 commands a fair bit of money on the second-hand market, even though there are a fair few of them out there. 
It had a really good run of about 20 to 21 years from 1982 to 2002. Starting in 2000, we see a new era of boss pedals emerge, which I call the digital era. Now they'd made digital pedals in the past, but basically from 2000 to 2013, every pedal that they released was digital with the exception of the mega distortion. They start to replace a lot of their classic analog circuits like their analog phaser, analog flanger, and even classic designs like the CH1 and the CE5. They go from being analog to being digital. This is no different with the OC series. In 2003, they bring out the successor to the OC2, which is the digital OC3. Now, I'm not a fan of this period of boss pedal. In fact, this is my least favorite period of boss pedal. However, the OC3 here, I think is one of the best digital pedals they brought out in this time. <laughs> Now the OC3 is unique in the fact that it is loved by electric guitarists, acoustic guitarists, and bass guitarists. They've created a separate input here for bass guitar, which is better voiced for that instrument. It has three different modes. The first mode is called drive, which is kind of like a, a fuzz or a really thick distortion with a sub octave. This effect I think sounds best on bass. Our second mode is Oct2. Now this is basically a digital version of the OC2. We have our direct level, we have a sub octave, and then we have a second sub octave. The biggest difference is that this tends to track a bit better on the low notes than the OC2, but it still can be a little bit glitchy. Mode number three is the genius part of this pedal. So the OC2 and the first two modes of this are what we call monophonic, meaning you can only play one note at a time. If you play two notes or more at a time with this on, it will crap itself. It doesn't know what to do. Enter poly mode. All of a sudden you can play full chords and have bass notes on them. But the really cool thing is in poly mode, we lose the second octave and that third knob becomes a range knob and it basically sets the cutoff point for where you want the octave to stop. So if you want to set this up just to basically have bass notes on the lowest notes of your chords, you can just fine tune it so that it cuts out on your higher notes and it's not there, but it's there on your lower notes, giving you the impression that there's a bass playing along with your guitar. And this is what I know a lot of acoustic guitar players love about this pedal. Now I'm not exactly sure if the OC3 here is still being made. One thing I do know is that on the second hand market, these things hold their value very, very well. In fact, I've seen these go for about the same price as the newer OC5 second hand. In 2014, Boss starts to usher in a new era of pedals, which I call the retrospective era. The retrospective era is typified by them looking to the past for inspiration. So a good example of that is there was a craft line taking long extinct pedals like the DC2 Dimension and re-releasing it as the DC2 was a craft. 
A fair few petals have got the Wazza Craft treatment, even ones that never went extinct. And I think that's great. But also they've looked to some of their other designs, for example, the Slicer and the Space Echo and reimagined them in a smaller format. In 2020, the OC series gets the retrospective treatment and they bring out the OC5. They skip the number four because they always do that. It's got some sort of cultural reason behind it. Anyway, the OC5 here is supposed to combine the best elements of the vintage OC2 and the digital OC3. Down the bottom we have a little toggle mode which puts it into vintage mode. Vintage mode is supposed to have all the glitchy goodness of the OC2. It gives us our sub octave and our second sub octave and it's supposed to glitch out just like the OC2 used to. Switch it to poly mode and we have some new and interesting options. So they dispense with the second sub octave and replace that with an octave up. So you know how to have an octave up, an octave down and your direct level. This gives you those really cool organ like sounds. coolest thing about this is that you can set it to your lowest note. So down in this bottom corner here, it's kind of like the range control on the OC3, but I can play a full chord and it will only pick up the lowest note to reproduce an octave below. All of the other notes in the chord are not affected by it. And I think this is really useful, particularly if you're playing on your own and you just want a bit of extra low frequency, it's like having a bass player playing the root note of every chord that you're playing. Once you start to move that range up, it becomes like the range control on the OC3. Up on the top, we have a selector for what instrument you're using, either bass or guitar, rather than have two different inputs, which again, is a really cool idea. don't think that the vintage mode on this quite nails the OC2 sound, but it's pretty close. But I love the idea of looking to the past, but also giving us cool new modern features. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what other amazing creations that Boss come up with in the next few years. So if you're a fan of the Boss Octave pedals, let me know in the comments below. Tell me which one's your favorite and how you like to use it. If you like this kind of series, I have a playlist that has all of my other uh, Boss series videos in it. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. You can join the Middle Age Gear Junkie Facebook page by clicking on the link in the description. And you can support this channel by going to the Middle Age Gear Junkie store and buying some merchandise. Other than that, my name is Jason. Have a great day.